Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Captain's Log, Subject 221012.5. It's very rare that an inmate breaks the rules here, yet it still happens. So what we like to do is make sure that an example is made. We remove all the limbs and feed them to the cannibals. They sure do learn afterwards. Hello everyone, welcome to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmates number 145 to the ISO cubes. Inmates number 145 is somebody I recognised but also someone I had forgotten to cover last year. So sorry about this, but as they're in the ISO cubes for an incredibly long time for crimes that actually vary, I'm more than happy to wait a year, which is what it's been, sorry, to cover this person and put them sufficiently on blast for the mistakes they made. Inmates number 145's name is Paul Ballard, and I recognized him from my childhood because Paul Ballard was a television presenter and actor. So what we're going to do is talk about the life and career of Paul Ballard, inmates number 145. We are then going to go through the crimes of Paul Ballard. There are two separate crimes with two separate trials. The only good thing about this really is he got a consecutive sentence. I prefer it to concurrent. Concurrent means they run at the same time. Consecutive means he starts one, completes it, then starts the other, then completes that. So let us begin with who is Paul Ballard, aka Dez. Inmates number 145, aka Paul Dez Ballard, born March 9th, 1982 in Essex, England, is described as an English television presenter and stage actor who made his TV debut in 1995 playing a trick-or-treater who beat up Rick Mayle and Adrian Edmondson in the TV sitcom Bottom. In the mid-90s, he was seen as a co-presenter of the Disney Club, and after a change in the show's format, he presented a new Sunday morning show called Roadhog, where he would take a VW camper van decorated with ears and orange spots on the road to viewers' homes and schools. He also appeared in a Daz Washing Powder TV ad with his big sister, and it featured him winning something out of a toy grabbing machine. He continued his association with the Disney Club, which had changed format and was now presented by Craig Doyle and twins Sam and Matt, along with Reggie Yates, known as Robbie, by the way, on that show, between 1995 and 1998. In April 1998, Paul Ballard and Fern Cotton launched a new interactive Disney slot as part of GMTV, which is an ITV morning program, called Dig It, which is how I knew who he was, because I grew up watching that show. He continued with the show through until 2002 with a number of co-presenters. His last television appearance was in the production, stage production, of Peter Pan at the Central Theatre in Kent in 2001, where he starred as Smee. After this, he vanished. So my knowing of him was this kid on television. There isn't much to add beyond that. I didn't know he was in bottom, but he had a promising career. Dig It, for example, launched the careers of some people, Fern Cotton more notably. She went on to appear in a few other shows, presenting, and hosts a number of radio shows. Her career went off quite well because of it. Others, in fact, their careers were kick-started by these kids' shows. Reggie Yates is another fantastic example of that. Now, because of the trial itself, to both the crimes that he will commit, we then find out that he was involved in a number of businesses, much of which was in fact illegal as it concerned the Green Belt. So we're now going to go to the crimes of Paul Ballard and hopefully make some sense of the utter insanity that took place 20 years after he was last seen. For this, we're going to go through the crime, the trial, of the first crime and then do the same for the second and leave both sentences until the end. So to the first crime, on the 20th of February 2020, Paul Ballard was involved in an eight-car pileup in Essex, which resulted in the death of two people. 
In his car was his own son. He had been in Squirrels Heath Road in Romford, travelling at 30 miles per hour, before suffering a seizure behind the wheel which accelerated him up to 104 miles per hour. His vehicle was the one that in fact caused the pileup in the first place. One of the victim's cars had actually stopped at the traffic lights when they were hit at speed from behind. The other person, a school teacher, was actually waiting at a bus stop. The London Fire Brigade had to cut a number of people free from their cars and six patients were taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The court in this trial had heard there was no evidence to suggest that a Class A drug had caused the crash or seizure, and Paul Ballard had not notified his GP or the DVLA about them. Medical records actually showed that he had three seizures prior to the collision, two in 2016 and one in 2019, something which you are meant to tell the DVLA about, and then you have your license revoked for it. And he also admitted during the trial to being addicted to sherbet. During the trial, the prosecutor Edward Franklin had said that Paul Ballard flagrantly ignored the risk of driving when he had had seizures without warning before, with one previous incident in him falling down a flight of stairs and waking up in a pool of his own blood. Edward Franklin summarised victim impact statements from bereaved relatives. Sharon, the wife of husband Richard who passed away in the collision, said that he had worked as a schoolteacher for more than two decades most recently at a primary school. Following his death, his wife, now widow Sharon, had resigned from her own job teaching vulnerable children as an assistant head teacher after struggling to cope without him, saying Richard was not just my husband, but my best friend, my rock. Losing him the way I did is something I will never recover from. When she closed her eyes, all she could see was what happened, rather than her husband's smiling face, which is what Mr. Franklin, the prosecutor, added. During this trial, he denied further charges of causing death by driving while uninsured, and Judge Richard Marks QC said the accident Ballard caused could have been much worse. This is the first crime. The second crime, I'm going to insert a trigger warning. You think two people passing away is bad? This one gets worse because it involves violating a person. I'll put a timestamp at the top if you want to skip it. On the 19th of September 2020, in a hotel in Hatfield Heath, Paul Ballard struck by launching an attack on a woman. During the incident, Paul Ballard told her, your life is ending, you are dying tonight. This woman fled the room and found a member of hotel staff who then called the police. Police safeguarded the woman, who has been supported throughout the last 12 months by specialist officers, now 24 months. Paul Ballard claimed to have had consensual sex with the woman and denied that he had threatened her. As far as additional information to this crime go, there isn't much to go on. The trial itself centers around the fact that Paul Ballard denied all counts, which includes S. Assault, attempted S. Assault, assault, criminal damage, and threats to kill. We also don't have much with regards to the trial itself, so we're going to have to now skip to the sentences for both the original crime of the car crash and what he did mere months later. Inmates number 145, aka Paul Des Ballard. For the charge of causing death by dangerous driving, he pled guilty. For this, he was sentenced to nine years in the ISO cubes. When sentencing, Judge Richard Marks QC said, each of the victim's families is utterly devastated by the loss that they have sustained. And it goes without saying that no sentence that I impose upon you will seem adequate to any of them, or will seem capable of compensating them for that absolutely devastating loss. He also imposed a follow-up sentence of 11 and a half years disqualified from driving upon completing his sentence. Now, I earlier mentioned there were other things as well that we need to talk about. In December 2021, following a hearing in Basildon, a confiscation order of just over half a million pounds was made against Paul Ballard in regards to profits he made from one of his businesses that had been operating illegally, which was a self-storage business set up on Greenbelt land without planning permission. They also failed to comply with an enforcement notice which required them to close the business and return the land back to its original state. Paul Ballard was considered the front man of all of this, so anyone he had also worked with was considered an unwitting accomplice. This effectively bankrupted him. But now we go to the second sentence. By unanimous jury decision, Paul Ballard was found guilty of S. Assault, attempted assault, S, that is, assault, criminal damage, and threats to unalive. He had contested these charges, 
and fail. For his crime, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison to run consecutive to his other sentence, meaning he will at least serve 10 years in prison, meaning he won't be out of prison until he's 50 years old. Although it is likely he will have to serve all of the first sentence and all of the second sentence because of the severity of the crimes committed. But based on the UK criminal justice system, half seems about right based on our own broken system. When he leaves prison, he will have no money, he has no debt, no court fees, nothing really beyond responsibility to be a father. But by the time he's out of prison, his son will have grown up without him, perhaps even learnt to be a better person because he's not there. Someone who had a promising career at the start shunned it for an easy way out to make lots of money, and in doing so, got involved in cliché things that invariably ended up with him in an ISO queue. Paul Ballard deserves this. Simple as that.